Do you ever find yourself playing small? Maybe that tiny voice in your head is holding you back? Or alternatively, do you sometimes just wish that other people will come and sort everything out for you so you don't have to? Then keep watching. So today we are going to look at underinflated ego traps, that part of ourselves that causes us to play small and to give away our power. Imagine four different people planning a party, four different people with entirely different personalities that are going to illustrate the different underinflated ego traps that each of us can have. Person number one, when they think about the party, think, oh, I wonder what my guests would like. What will be the best thing that will keep them entertained and keep them happy for the evening? So they may well consult with their guests, find out what sort of food they like to eat, find out what will be the most appropriate entertainment, what will be a really good ambience to create for their guests. They think everything from the point of view of their guests. Brilliant from the point of view of their guests' enjoyment. But when they've actually got the planning underway, they look at the party and they think, this isn't really what I want. Everyone else is going to be really, really happy, but I'm not sure I just want to have finger food all night. I think I prefer a, a sit down dinner. So they're pleasing other people really, really well, but ending up feeling resentful and like they haven't created something that's going to be good for themselves. Person number two, on the other hand, they go into the planning of their party with intricate detail. They consider what is the venue going to be like? How will it be decorated? What are the colours going to, what's the colour scheme going to be like? Is it all going to match? And are the invites, is the right font being used to represent the atmosphere they want to create when they send the invites out? And about the food, got to test the food out before the event to make sure it's of absolutely A plus quality. Can't possibly give anything that's, sec that's secondhand quality to my guests. And despite creating a most amazing experience for their guests, there's a nagging doubt constantly in their mind that this isn't good enough and they end up still feeling bad about themselves. Person number three, well, they embark, they kind of rush into planning the party start looking into all sorts of different elements that are involved and very quickly become overwhelmed. Overwhelmed to the degree that they actually become very disillusioned about why on earth did I plan this party in the first place? I'm not sure I even want to do it. And oh, poor old me having to deal with all this stuff. And they start moaning to their friends. And in fact, in moaning, they start engaging their friends in to come on board and do the party for them rather than do it themselves. Finally, there's person number four. Person number four loves the idea of having a party, but they are plagued with doubts about how safe it will be. What will be the best mix of people to make sure that people get on okay? After all, we can't risk any conflict occurring at the party. You've got to make sure everyone's going to have a good time and enjoy themselves. In choosing the venue, is there enough fire safety regulations? Are people going to find that they can enjoy themselves in this venue? Don't want to make it look bad on them that they've provided a party that no one is actually enjoying and that actually is unsafe in the first place. And actually, when I think about it, maybe a party is too big a thing. Maybe we can't go with that. Maybe we should just have a small soiree, you know, half a dozen people around at my house. That would be a lot easier than uh, planning a great big party. So in describing those four different people's attitudes to planning a party, what I hope I've demonstrated for you are the four different ego traps, the underinflated ego traps. And each of those result, when we have an underinflated ego trap running us, that results in us playing smaller and also not feeling great about ourselves and great about our circumstances. The first one I illustrated, the one where the person was wanting to keep everybody else happy, is the ego trap I would refer to as people pleaser. Always out there trying to make sure everyone is okay, very, very good at creating harmony and looking after others, but not so good at looking after themselves. And, and if you're a people pleaser, you may well find that you end up feeling resentful about what the circumstances are and the fact that you've looked after everybody and nobody's looking after you. You may sometimes feel like a bit of a martyr. 
The second one we talked about was the perfectionist in us. Never good enough. Nothing is ever, ever good enough. So the plus of that is that you'll create really high standards. You'll deliver a really good quality experience for people, but you'll always have that nagging self-doubt always talking yourself down and maybe even putting pressure on other people too because what they do is never good enough either. The third one is an, another element of our victim. It's rescue me. Now, who has never, ever wanted to be rescued? I know there are just times in our lives where we just want, just want everyone to take it off my plate. I don't want to have to deal with this. But that is part of being a victim. And rescue me... I struggle to think about what the pluses were to rescue me. Maybe if you're if you're playing from that part of your ego, you're really good at being vulnerable, which is a strength when it comes to being a leader. But you'll also be really good at oversharing and kind of dumping your problems and your issues and expecting other people to pick them up. And that can be really exhausting for those people around you. The final one of our ego traps that I mentioned here is being cautious. If that is the ego trap that's running you, then you will find it quite hard to get going because you'll be racked with doubt and concern about safety and about whether you're going to be okay and whether other people are going to be okay. And sometimes you might even feel a bit paranoid that people are out to get you when you're running that being cautious one. And, you know, as we illustrated in the party example, you can start off with a big idea, but then it turns out to be a much smaller idea that you have in the end because your ego, that ego trap is holding you back. So there I have described the four underinflated ego traps. I hope they've illustrated for you how they can really interfere with our sense of personal power. Have a think about which ones resonate the most with you. And then also consider, are you basing your reaction when you're coming from that ego trap on something that you've decided back in your past, that you've learned from back in your past? And how is that serving you now in your present? And then think about what is it you would like to change or modify in terms of that ego trap? Where could you take the strengths of it, but where can you keep an eye on the overplaying of it that then starts interfering with you being effective? I would love to hear your own insights about your own ego traps, overinflated or underinflated. So please do write in the comments below. And do remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to be kept up to date on when we're releasing new videos, please remember to ring the bell.